friends and welcome to the channel and uh, I hope you had a very happy new year. Um, I hope you had a Merry Christmas and you shared it with family and friends. So it's 2023 and with a fresh new year comes a fresh perspective. For the most part, War Thunder has had an exciting 2022. Some things have uh, changed for the better, some not. Regardless though, there are lots of new mechanics, new weapons and planes and vehicles. These changes and additions have without a doubt adjusted the meta. Knowing where to focus your research efforts, it's paramount. So which tech trees are the best to grind for 2023? We'll stick around and find out. Now, just like 2022, I'm not factoring in naval, I'm sorry. I just haven't played it enough. Maybe that'll change this year though, and um, I'll be able to give you a more informed opinion maybe sometime later in 2023. So what I'm going to do is rank order the tech trees and I'm going to use five criteria. You know, some of them are objective, some subjective, but I use those criteria to try to quantify each um, tree's place in my ranking. And then I render an overall outlook for the tree um, for the gear. So let's quickly go over those criteria real quick. So the first one is excitement. Um, a little bit subjective, I know. Um, you know, it's a pretty obvious one though. People really got to be excited to want to grind something. Tech trees that have a variety of vehicles and excite players tend to be the most popular and most fun to play. Next is player friendliness and I use a high, low and medium for this and that is basically how easy are the vehicles to use and master, meaning do the vehicles have a high or a low skill floor. Alright, so the next criteria is the rage quit index or the misery index. It's a, a new one, I didn't use this last year, that's a high, medium, low as well. Some trees just have certain BRs that are just painful to play or certain vehicles, like I said, that just make you want to rage quit the game. All right, so up next is the firepower, high, medium, or low. How lethal are the vehicles? Do they have good ammunition choices and can they deal effectively with vehicles in their BR range? So next up is synergy. Um, this is all about, I mean, this game is all about lineups. Simply having one or two good tanks, um, you know, or or one or two good support vehicles with nothing to complement them is not going to be very fun. Um, so how well can your vehicle support each other in a lineup is basically what this is all about. And is there enough variety in the tech tree itself to have an effective lineup? And then once I'm done with all that, I give my outlook for the tree, you know, it's outlook for 2023. Um, you know, how well will this tech tree age? How, um, you know, how often is it going to be updated? Is it going to see frequent updates and additions? Um, is it going to be power crept or is it going to be forgotten by Gaijin? All right, so now that we've got the pre-flight out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the meat of the discussion. My first choice for this year um, is the USA. As War Thunder grinds into future tech, the US tech tree, I think, is coming into its own. It's exciting to finally see this tree getting fourth generation jets. Um, that just make it so lethal. Combined arms play has never been better for the US. Closer support options are plentiful and ammunition choices on aircraft, tanks, and light vehicles are just nothing short of amazing. The player friendliness of this tree is high. There are lots of competitive tech tree and premium vehicles to choose from. Um, you have great aircraft flexibility across the full tech tree. From B-17s and P-51s to the F-14 and F-16s, this aviation tree is forgiving and fun. If you only want to play aviation, like you only want to play Air RB or even Arcade, you're not going to be bored here. This tree has some of the best ordnance in the game, has some of the best planes in the game, and there's plenty of variety, like I said. The aircraft are exceptionally good. The US tech tree has aviation options, I think, for every niche. On the ground side of things, the tanks are, are adequate early on if you like Shermans. We all know about the Sherman. Not the best tank, but that's my opinion. Um, but you do learn the basics with the Sherman. You also learn not to depend on your armor very early on in the game. Um, by the time you get to mid and top tier, like Strikers, Bradleys, and Abrams, you should be quite deadly with your vehicles. Late model US tanks overall are typified by being decently mobile and they have really good firepower and very good armor. The rage quit slash misery index for the US tech tree I would say is low depending on the BR bracket and rank though. For ground forces from rank 2 to 4, you're going to be dealing with tanks um, that are better than your Sherman. 
you know, tanks like the Tiger II, uh, you know, that's pretty rough if you're going to play against them with your Shermans. So you have to know how to use your tank. I personally don't particularly like playing low to mid tier US ground because of the equipment that's available, but don't let that stop you. One personal grievance I have um, with the US Tech Tree and War Thunder is that the helicopters are not particularly good. Specifically, I mean the Hellfire missile. It's mediocre, and so is the Stinger air to air missile. The AH-64D Apache Longbow does not have its longbow hellfires. It's basically just a regular Apache. So no fire and forget ability at all. And um, like I said, the Stingers are horrible air to air missiles. Some helicopters have the AM-9L, like the um, AH-1Z, uh, the Cobra Zulu has the AM-9L, and so does the premium Greek Apache that's in the US tech tree. It has the option to use both the Stinger in the AM-9L at the same time. So you just got to know that you're going to be regularly outperformed by Russian helicopters. But as a caveat to that, US fixed wing cast is so good, it almost you know, just cancels out how I think bad the helicopters are or how adequate the helicopters are. Probably a better and more correct um, evaluation. So the combined arms nature of ground forces mode always, always um, helps US players to synergize their lineups and project maximum firepower. That's the main strength of the US tech tree, it's combined arms. All right, so just to reiterate here, US fixed wing casts is superior and you can often carry games alone um, you know with just your planes u.s ground vehicles depending on the tier have some of the most powerful gun rounds and atgms in the game and some very good gun handling at that um acquisition gear is okay you don't always have the best thermal sights so overall the outlook for this tree in 2023 is very good there are multiple aircraft and ground vehicles that have yet to be added and um, this tree sees significant updates almost every patch. So you're never gonna go wrong playing US. All right, so player friendliness for this tree is high. The rage quit index is low. The firepower rating is high. Synergy is high. And the outlook for this tree is very good. All right, so next up is Russia. Placers are swapped from last year, primarily because of the introduction of fourth generation fighters. But this tree is still very exciting to play. The MiG-29 Fulcrum is an amazing aircraft, although um, at least qualitatively it is behind Western technology. And um, at any rate, the Russian tree is still one of the best to grind in the game. And it's very popular with players, despite some initial teething issues with the MiG-29 Fulcrum in the game. So player friendliness is high for this tree. There are lots of competitive tech tree and premium vehicles to choose from. The aircraft are competitive and fun to use, although most Russian fighters have low amounts of gun ammunition and kind of a low muzzle rate, depending on what tier you are. Um, if you're a trigger happy person, especially with the low ammo capacity, this could be an issue for you. The offset is um, the aircraft generally have high flight performance, though. So switching over to ground, Russia has lots of heavy tanks in the low to mid tiers um, for people who really enjoy playing heavy armor. Russian tanks uh, also have very powerful guns at mid-tier, although gun handling is not the best. Russian tanks at top tier suffer from mobility problems when trying the reverse, for example. So taking dynamic fighting positions with Russian tanks uh, can kind of be an issue. The reverse gear is just really bad. Russian tanks also suffer from lack of depression angles, unlike their Western counterparts, and in, especially in the higher tier. The ammunition carousel design um, kind of makes them very vulnerable from the side. Um, however, this is offset by very good turret armor and ERA and I don't know, just very good luck for Russian vehicles in the game. You know, sometimes you hit them right in the carousel, right in the ammo, and they just don't blow up. Overall, I would say the rage quit index is low for this tree. Russian lineups do pretty good at most BRs and there are a few vehicles I would say that are unplayable. In fact, there's such a variety in choices. I mean, tanks, tank destroyers, light vehicles, ATGM carriers. It's easy to find a vehicle or vehicles that you're comfortable with, but um, steer clear of tank destroyer line if you don't like casemate design vehicles. Firepower wise, Russian vehicles are lethal with very good ammunition choices. Lots of tanks have APHE rounds, 
which are very good if you penetrate. Um, you're usually going to knock out the tank with one shot if you penetrate. And if you like tank launch ATGMs, you're going to love Russian tanks. They're very good for dealing with helicopters low altitude, especially if you don't have an SPAA at the ready. Russian fixed wing aviation is strong, but not as lethal as US fixed wing close air support. In Air RB, Russian aircraft have adequate missiles and adequate guns. Like I said, you know, watch out for the low ammo capacity and the low muzzle velocity on some jets. But in Ground RB, I find that Russian fixed wing close air support, the guided munitions don't slap as hard as in the US tech tree. Um, but it's an entirely different story when we're talking about Russian rotary wing close air support. They have the best helicopters in the game because they have the best missiles in the game, the Vickr missile, which can contest aircraft and ground targets alike. Now, Russian lineups synergize pretty well um, and they can be quite large. You have vehicles that fit every niche of a dynamic battle. You just have so much of everything. You can just keep going and keep going and keep going. You know, you can just exhaust enemies because you can keep respawning. So your lineup hit hard due to the overwhelming amounts of vehicles you have and the overwhelming amount of armor you can bring. You have powerful light vehicles that can complement your tanks and you have decisive rotary wing close air support. The outlook uh, for this tree is very good. This tech tree sees updates nearly every patch by Gaijin and it's kept extremely relevant. You won't go wrong if you grind the Russian tech tree. So overall metrics for this tree, the player friendliness is high, the rage quit slash misery index is low, the firepower is high, the synergy for your lineups is high, and the outlook for this tree is very good in 2023. All right, so coming in in spot number three is China. This nation has moved up several places from last year. I was cautiously optimistic the last time I covered this tree in depth, and I'm happy to say that Gaijin, you know, did make me out to be crazy. Some may say it's a mostly copy paste tree, but I think that categorization misses the point of the tree. It's true there are lots of vehicles from other nations and most of the planes and ground vehicles are of Soviet and Russian origin or, you know, they're derivatives of those vehicles. But the tech tree also has Western equipment blended in, um, which makes it unique and lends um, to way more diverse tactics, really. The tree has probably the best F-16 in the game right now, the F-16A MLU. They have really good helicopters, both premium and tech tree, and they have solid MBTs. It's really good for a player who wants a competitive US or Western and Russian vehicles in one tree and a fighting style that blends in Western design philosophy and tactics. This tree has high player friendliness and has some of the most exciting vehicles in the game. Many of the problems and gaps the tree suffered early on have been fixed, relatively speaking. For example, SPA gaps have been plugged with the addition of three competitive SAM systems um, and SPA systems starting from 8.3. China has um, one of the best SAMs in the game right now, a top tier, the Torum 1. Okay, switching over to aircraft and overlooking the general copy paste nature, you know, you have Western and Soviet Russian origin aircraft there. They're generally competitive aircraft to play though. The ammunition, the air to air missiles, the air to ground missiles, some of them are copy paste as well, you know, Chinese copied versions, but there is some good indigenously developed and manufactured ordnance as well. Top tier Chinese MBTs going back to ground, although greatly influenced by Russia, they have their own uniqueness, I would say. They have some good acquisition systems. They have really good thermal sites at top tier. The armor is pretty good too, but they do suffer some of the same mobility issues as Russian tanks. You know, they don't reverse very well. And they, for gun handling, they generally do not have good gun angles. Not They don't have good depression. But Chinese helicopters at top tier, I say they are second to the Russian helicopters. They have some pretty good air-to-air -air missiles on those things. All right, so the rage quit slash misery index for China, I would say is low now. It really didn't used to be low. I would say at least medium to high, um, especially with all the gaps it had. But like I said, many of those gaps have been plugged. Um, there's more light vehicles now. There was lack of potent SPAA, that's been fixed. And there was actual lack of high tier MBT variety and that's been addressed. It's quite a painless grind now if you're gonna start from the beginning. 
With the addition of the F-16A MLU and the entire addition of the Chinese helicopter tech tree in 2022, both fixed wing and rotary wing casts contribute to you having very good carry options um, when and where you need it. All right, so let's talk about firepower here. This tech tree has ample firepower and you can deal with opponents in all domains. Your top MBTs can hold their own against enemies uh, in their BR range and you have very strong light vehicles, although you could always use more, I know. Your top tier MBTs have excellent APF SDS and um, they are also ATGM capable. Like I said before, the helicopters are really good. They have very good ATGMs and like I also said, they have those amazing air-to-air -air missiles, the TY-90. Overall, the lineups synergize quite well. I mean, you can build some really effective lineups. Um, although, in my opinion, you could use more light vehicles at the top end, um, but that's just a small critique. Uh, you have a vehicle for almost every niche though, although not as many as the US or Russian tech tree. Overall, the outlook is very good for the tree in 2023. Gaijin has been putting in real effort um, into building this tree up. And you know you can see that. It sees updates nearly every patch. You can't really go wrong as a new player, especially if you start start the game grinding China. All right, so overall, the metrics here, player friendliness is high. The um, rage quit slash misery index is low. The firepower is high, synergy is high, and the outlook for this tree in 2023 is very good. All right, so coming up in fourth place here is Germany. Now this tree has a range of exciting vehicles to play and it's one of the largest trees in the game with an overwhelming choice of World War II planes and ground vehicles. If you only want to play World War II era, this is probably one of the best tech trees to do it in. Uh, the World War II era transitions smoothly to Cold War and then modern. This tree is exceptionally fun if you're a fan of like Panther and Tiger tanks and Leopard tanks. For the aviation enthusiasts though, you know, like the Falco with 190 and the BF 109s and T 52s, you know, they dominate the early ranks. There are still some issues with this tree that I don't like. Your top tier ground vehicles are some of the finest in the game. You have excellent main battle tanks and support vehicles. Fixed wing close air support has gotten somewhat better, but it's still not the greatest. The addition of the Tornado IDS may change that somewhat, but we'll see. But as of this update, Germany still does not have a fourth generation air superiority fighter that can go against the F-16 or even the F-14. Despite that though, this tree is still highly popular and one of the most player friendly ones around with a high player friendly rating. Most vehicles, especially the tanks, are very forgiving and are extremely competitive. The Leopard 2A6 is arguably the best MBT in the game and Leopard series tanks are very easy to use. The Leopard 2, let's, uh, let's not get that confused. <laughs> They're very easy to use because of their excellent armor and mobility and firepower. The tech tree is very flushed out with almost no capability gaps in the ground forces. From a synergistic perspective, you can build some eye-watering lineups that complement each other, kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So logically, ground battles is where this tech tree shines. The rage quit index uh, slash misery index I think is low. But you just don't have very good air superiority fighters switching over to air right at top tier. You got the F4F, you got the MiG-21 Bissau and the MiG-23 MLA being, you know, the best third generation fighters that you can field. As I said before, the Tornado is, um, you know, new and it's, it's pretty good um, for what it is. It's strike and cast only, really, but it's not really a good choice for air RB. The firepower rating is high for Germany. Due to the excellent ground vehicles, you have no problem with ammunition not being sufficient enough to deal with enemies in your BR range. Synergy is high as well, and you can build some amazing lineups like I was saying. Vehicles like the Tiger II, the Puma IFE, um, the, the Rad 90, the Leopard 2A6, the Florock Rod stand out for their lethality, but um, that's hardly all of the good vehicles. The German tech tree is consistently good. When it comes to main battle tanks though and lightly armored vehicles the future outlook for this tree is just good though um mostly it comes down in my opinion to aviation in my opinion germany has few possibilities for fourth generation fighters it mostly comes down to germany getting the mig 29 which they still don't have the f4f ice um, which isn't a fourth gen jet 
you know, it's a third gen jet with some fortune capabilities. And of course, they'll eventually get the Typhoon and the F-35, which we don't need to really go into here. But if you don't care about modern aviation as much, and you mostly play ground forces anyway, then this is the tree for you. This tree sees updates frequently, but not as much as the others. All right, so in summary for the German tech tree, player friendliness is high. The rage quit slash misery index is low. Firepower is high and synergy is high for the lineups. And the outlook for this tree is just good. All right, so next up in fifth place is Britain. This is one of my favorite trees though, despite its position, but it's not for everyone. And why is that? It's because British tanks are slow and slow tanks don't fit the meta in War Thunder. They can still be fun though. So if you like slow tanks that are well armed and well armored and you like centurions, chieftains and challengers, then you have arrived at the right tree. The aviation tree on the other hand is rich with historical planes like the Spitfire, Meteor and the Hunter. All solid aircraft if you like playing that low to mid tier range. Top tier is nicer though, especially for strike and close air support planes like the Jaguar, the Harrier, and the Tornado. At the moment, Britain doesn't really have a competitive fourth generation air superiority fighter. You know, the F-4 just keeps soldering on, but it is expected to receive the Tornado air defense variant at some point. Gaijin said it's coming soon. Overall, the tree is quite fun with a player friendliness rating of medium. I enjoy playing most of my vehicles and with the addition of the South African subtree, you get access to even more unique vehicles. The bane of the British tree, however, continues to be the lack of high tier competitive light vehicles. British top tier MBTs, although slow, have exceptionally well armored turrets and can generally hold their own, especially in hold down positions. However, you don't have a vehicle for every niche and as the battle rages on, you'll generally find yourself literally tank heavy with few appropriate support vehicles to support opportunities. The Misery slash um, Rage Quit Index overall, I would rate as low. It's kind of pushing the medium though, but I'll leave it at low. Because of this, you start getting stabilized guns earlier than other nations, which gives you the edge in like those mid-tier battles. If you can get used to having slow MBTs, you know, a slow tank can be good. It gives you time to think about what you're going to do before you race up there. Um, but if you can get used to that, um, slow MBTs and very few good support vehicles, the tree isn't too bad. All right, so moving on to firepower. So overall, I'm going to have to give it a medium because British mid-tier tanks, their APDS rounds and Hesh shells aren't that great, but they do all right work. Talking about the British top tier MBTs, the, the rounds are better. You know, they have APF SDS, not the best rounds in the game, also do all right work. You can handle most enemies in your BR range. Moving over to um, aviation, you have good fixed wing cast options, especially from mid to top tier. Helicopter support is a bit sparse though, um, but it's it's adequate. The British Apache is probably the best one available in the game because it has missile approach warning system and the Star Streak missiles. All right, so British lineups don't synergize as well as others owing to the lack of mobility in its tanks and the lack of top tier support vehicle variety. So I give it a rating of low. You just can't capitalize on opportunities as they present themselves during the course of a battle. You really need help from your team when you're playing Britain. The future outlook for this tree is just fair. This tree has done well in the past year though. Uh, it doesn't always get impactful vehicles in some patches. So you could be left a little bit frustrated and unsatisfied if you grind Britain for one of your first trees. All right, so just a review of ratings for this tree. Player friendliness is medium. The um, rage quit slash misery index is low. Firepower is medium. Synergy is low though. And the outlook for this tree is fair. All right, so coming up in sixth place is Sweden. For 2023, the Swedish tech tree is in way better shape than it was at the beginning of last year. There have been so many more additions. Sweden got an entire helicopter tech tree and also it got the Finnish subtree. At the top end, the nation now has three competitive main battle tanks at BR 11.0, the Swedish STRVs and the Leopard 2A6 from Finland. Gaijin didn't stop there though. There were plenty more vehicles to fill the gaps. The result is a somewhat balanced and fun tree with competitive aircraft and ground vehicles. If you're looking for something different, this is a good place to start. 
you have the Swedish S tanks which have their own playstyle and you have vehicles from other nations that make this a refreshing tree to grind. I think what I like most about this tree are the really fun to play light vehicles. I especially like the STRF 90 series of vehicles. There, there are so many of them in the tree, it's a really good variety. On the aviation side of things, of course, there's the J37 Viggen, which it looks cool and it's also a pretty competitive aircraft. Player friendliness for this tree overall, though, I'll rate as medium. I say this because even though some of the ground vehicles like the S tanks are, like I said, unique, they do require a different type of playstyle than you might be used to. Of course, you could skip those tanks and just play conventional tanks in the tree, but where's the challenge in that? So close air support, especially in the higher tiers for the Swedish tech tree, is kind of lackluster. The fixed wing close air support is lacking in smart munitions, um, especially when you get the top tier. There's a lot of dumb rockets that you could use that are really not that intuitive. There's a lot of choices in there. And, and the best use case is kind of elusive sometimes. But the best jet that you can field in top tier uh, ground battles is the AJ-37. But its weapons loadout, the loadouts are meager. With the RB-75 being the only fire and forget munition that you could carry, you can have two of those, which limits your standoff capability. And when you're looking at rotary wing close air support, it's just barely adequate and tops out at BR 10.7 with an Apache. Low tier to mid closer support is actually pretty nice though. And you have some pretty unique aircraft to pick from in Sweden if you're playing in that mid to low tier range. I'm gonna say the Rage Quit slash Misery Index is medium mostly because of the closer support situation at top tier. It's not decisive enough to carry alone. However, you can build some good lineups with this tree and the vehicles complement each other kind of well. The firepower is high as well. Swedish vehicles hit hard at top tier and you get some of the best tanks in the game. The Swedish and Finnish versions of the Leopard 2A6 tanks. Overall, the outlook is good for this tree though. It just got a major update with the addition of the Finnish subtree uh, like I was talking about. And there's more to add for fourth generation fighters for the, for the tech tree as a whole. You know, if you're thinking the Gripen, the Hornet, um, in the ground side, you know, the, the K2 Norwegian Black Panther, you know, Norway did evaluate the like the K2 Black Panther tank from South Korea. So there's hope for that as well. I would say if Gaijin continues to put the work in, the tree might end up being one of the best in the game in 2023. All right, so just to review, the player friendliness for this tree is medium. The uh, rage quit slash misery index is medium. The firepower is high. Synergy is medium. And the outlook for this tree is good. All right, so next up in spot number seven is France. This is one of my favorite tech trees, mainly because I love the Leclerc tanks and the Mirage aircraft. French ground vehicles are exciting to play, and lots of their tanks are highly mobile. They're lightly armored, though, but they pack lots of firepower. French aircraft, though, are not as competitive as other nations in War Thunder. From an air RB perspective, aircraft are mediocre for air superiority. You really don't start getting the good stuff until top tier and even then the Mirage 2000C and the new Mirage 2000D and the Jaguar are really the only standout aircraft in my opinion. French premium jets are also a pretty big disappointment so grinding is kind of hard. French helicopters are adequate for the task but their ATGMs are not very potent and the hot missiles have very short ranges. This tree has seen some major additions though such as more Leclerc MBTs multiple mid-tier light vehicles and additional air defense systems. Talking about firepower though, many French tanks have auto loaders, which is awesome for burst combat. Lots of the AMX 30 series tanks feature 20 millimeter auto cannons in addition to their main guns, giving French tanks very high firepower. You can disable enemies easily by destroying gun tubes or blowing off tracks. However, this tree's player friendliness, I'm gonna have to put at a medium and the, um, you know, the rage quit misery index and at high and here's the bad news and why if you can't play tanks without stabilized guns you're gonna pay the iron price if you play the french tech tree many french tanks even well into mid-tier have unstabilized guns to be effective you just have to adjust your play style with these tanks you got to set up in a cozy spot early and just start sniping 
I don't recommend this tree as your first tech tree. Don't be like me, that's what I did. But if you manage to survive that mid-tier unstabilized gun situation, it becomes way more comfortable as you get to top tier because you have highly capable MBTs with good ammunition choices. The Leclerc is a reliably solid MBT with great reload speed due to its autoloader, good mobility, and effective armor. Although top tier SPA is good, you lack high tier light vehicles to complement your main battle tank, so synergy for lineups is going to have to be medium. Aviation is looking better with the arrival of the Mirage 2000s. The Mirage 2000C is a superb air security fighter and the Jaguar and the Mirage 2000D are very capable close air support and strike platforms. There are way more variants of the Mirage 2000 aircraft that have yet to come to the game so that's good news. There are lots of light vehicles to come that Gaijin keeps overlooking though for top tier. And um, you know there's also another a couple more Leclerc's, the Leclerc XLR Scorpion and um, there's some other variants of the tank. For the UAE. At any rate though, the tree sees updates most patches, um, you know, sometimes though it does get skipped. And a lot of times when it does get vehicles, they kind of end up being duds. The outlook for this tree is fair for 2023. Okay, so just a review here. Player friendliness is medium. Rage quit misery index is high. Firepower is high. Synergy is medium. And outlook for this tree is fair. All right, so coming in at number eight is Israel. This is the newest full tree, and it has some very diverse equipment. Between the air and ground trees, there is equipment from France, the USSR, Britain, and the US, and of course, there's indigenously built Israeli equipment. Although Gaijin has been slow to implement the more modern Israeli-developed weapons like the Python air-to-air -air missile or the Spice family of munitions, for example, um, at this point, I think it can't be that far away. If you like Israeli modified M48s and M60s, then surprise, there are lots of Magoks that are waiting for you. And of course, there is the indigenously designed Merkava. The tree is um, a tank lover's dream, really, and that is one of its downfalls. Too many tanks, not enough support vehicles. Israeli aviation tree, um, on the other hand, caters very much to close air support for the ground forces. And honestly, if you're looking at this tree for a strictly like Air RB kind of thing, it doesn't really look that much fun to me. The jets look lackluster to say the least. And I mean, the tree did get the F-16A nets, but in my opinion, unfortunately, that's the most compelling plane in the tree right now. All right, so unfortunate there, but um, let's switch over. So although um, top tier Merkava tanks are good tanks, they didn't make as much of an impact in the game as I thought they would. The player friendliness of the line I'm going to rate as low because the tree is hobbled by a lack of competitive air defense systems and support vehicles. The uh, rage quit misery index is high here because you you just don't have any SPAA after the Macbeth at a 9.3 BR. You only really have tanks to throw at the enemy. There simply are no light support vehicles to be had. Rotary wing cast is available, but only adequate in my opinion. Your best high tier option being an Apache, but they don't carry anything like spike ATGMs or something like that, just Hellfires. Overall, you can't really build effective lineups, making the synergy for this tech tree low, and this may leave some players frustrated. I hate to dump on this tree so hard because, you know, they're kind of still building it. It just is what it is at this point. Although the main battle tank firepower is high and fixed wing cast options are okay, there's just too many gaps left in the tree to make it competitive. I'm still optimistic about this tree, but my outlook is concerned. It still needs lots of work to be competitive. All right, so recap here, player friendliness is low, the rage quit misery index is high, firepower is high, synergy is low, and outlook is concerned. All right, so coming in at number nine is Italy. And to be fair though, Gaijin has put some work into the tree in 2022 to try to make it competitive, but it still ends up near the bottom and here's why. The tree has been power crept in multiple areas. There are no main battle tanks above 10.7 and the Ariete feels kind of obsolete in War Thunder. The tree has no competitive SPAA at all and none above 10.7. Also, Italy is facing um, having yet another premium helicopter removed I guess due to lack of sales, the T-129 attack Turkish helicopter is being removed from sale just like the A-129 International was. 
The ATGMs on the T129 attack were some of the slowest in the game uh, and very painful to use at long range. There's some good news in the tree though. Uh, like I was saying, Gaijin added several very competitive light vehicles like the Dardo, the VCC8030, the VBC PT2, and the Premium VRCC. All of these are not enough though, in my opinion, to help. Um, but they are very good support vehicles. Italian Aviation is kind of a different story though. It has been raised from the dead with two competitive fourth generation fighters, the F-16 ADF and the Tornado IDS. Both were very much needed. Unless you of course have already started the tree and you have some sunk cost in there, there's very little reason to grind Italy unless you are bored or you have nothing else left to grind. Mostly I'm talking about the ground tree though. Low to mid tier aviation can be pretty fun. So player friendliness is low of course, firepower is medium and is lacking in some areas as your tanks no longer have anywhere near the best round in the game. That title goes to Germany. But hey, your rounds are still better than France, Britain, or Russia, so that's something. The Rage Quit slash Misery Index is high though. For example, even though you have the new Tornado, which represents very capable close air support, the jet has a BR of 11.3, meaning you have to drag your 10.7 Ariete and your 10.7 SPEA, the automatic, up to 11.3 um, just to use a Tornado. I think personally the tornado needs to go lower, but that's a different video. Um, and like I said, all of your SPA is a little obsolete. It's using the automatic is not optimal at all. Having said that, you can build lineups that are adequate. Your tanks are a little old, but you have options. Um, like you got light vehicles. You have pretty good light vehicle options. Your fixed wing close air support mostly lacks precision and standoff capability. The new Tornado has precision, but not much standoff at all, so synergy is going to be a bit medium. My outlook for this tree is concerned. It needs much more attention. You can have more fun with nearly every other tree before this, and I definitely don't recommend this tree for new players to grind, and even veterans should stay away from this tree, unless you're a masochist, of course. Alright, just to summarize, player friendliness for this tree is low. The Rage Quit Misery Index is high, Fire Pyro is medium, Synergy is medium, and Outlook is concerned. Alright, coming in in last place here is Japan. So overall, not much has changed for this tree in a year. Sure, the top tier MBTs are very competitive. You got the Type 90s and you got the new Type 10s, which have excellent reload speeds. Four seconds uh, between rounds is amazing due to the autoloader. They have Hydromatic Suspension, which means you can set yourself up in some pretty interesting defensive positions. However, the fun kind of ends right there. Gaijin hasn't really been able to plug gaps in the ground tree. There's still a lack of competitive SPA in the tree. Your best air defense tops out at the Type 93, which sits at BR 9.0, which is really sad. Type 91 IRA missile versus 11.3 jets is not really optimal. Aviation from low to mid tier though is actually pretty enjoyable is all of the World War II content is pretty top notch, kind of like Germany. If you just want to play World War II, this is a really good tree to do it. Um, as you get closer to top tier though, that's when things look bleak. There just isn't much left to add. The F4 EJ Kai is very good. It has a really good radar. In fact, it's the same radar from the F-16, the AVG-66. But overall, it's still an F4 and Japan has no competitive fourth generation fighter yet. Even the top tier premium jets are not compelling. Overall, the player friendliness varies with this tree depending on where you are. From mid to top tier, frustration levels go up though as you try to assemble viable lineups. As this guide is really here for players wishing to get the top tier, my player friendliness level and synergy rating is going to be medium. The rage quit and misery index is going to be high because you're missing just too many things once you leave the World War II era. You can't build robust lineups in your top tier because there's a lack of variety in support vehicles. For example, you have no ATGM carriers and no light assault vehicles other than the Type 16 at top tier. The Type 89 has been heavily nerfed since introduction and sits at 8.3 now. So firepower suffers a bit because you don't have good support vehicles, but because of the Type 90s and the Type 10s with that 4 second reload. Overall firepower is still going to be high. They really do have good rounds as well. So you can adequately deal with enemies in your BR range, as far as ground. 
As far as aviation, the F2 and the F15 will eventually come for the tree. Um, but you know, that's, that's way later. I'm thinking maybe the F15 could be in the next patch, but I, I don't know. This tree, um, overall, it needs a sub tree like pretty badly, but I don't know what that is. I don't even want to talk about the sensitivities and politics here. My outlook for this tree is very concerned, and unless you are an avid fan, I wouldn't recommend grinding past World War II, or at least the Cold War era, in this tech tree. At least there you have some options. Okay, so just to summarize here, the player friendliness for Japan is medium, the rage quit misery index is high, the firepower is high though, synergy is medium, and the outlook for this tree is very concerned. All right, so that is done. Those are my grind recommendations for 2023. If you happen to make it this far in the video and you watched everything all the way through, I really appreciate it. It takes me a long time to put these, uh, you know, these guides together. There's just so much um, with the script and with the research and, um, you know, with the evaluations. But um, as always, these are my opinions. Um, if you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Um, if you're not subscribed, you know, what are you waiting for? It's 2023. Go ahead and subscribe. And as always, I appreciate you stopping by and checking this out. And I'll see you in a future video. Thanks.